Today, I'm gonna to show you how to fit a clean LPS 3000 into a Volkswagen Transporter T6.1. Before we do, I just wanna remind you of a couple of things that you're gonna need. Need is a set of crimps that go up to 16 mil. This is to crimp the shoe onto the actual wire and some wire strippers like these will make your life a hell of a lot easier. If you don't know what I mean, this is what I'm talking about. Push it in, strip your wire. Push it in, strip your wire. As you can see, it's gonna make things a lot quicker. You will also need a heat gun or a hairdryer to shrink your heat shrink. And before I forget to mention, I am not an electrician. Do you remember the uh, WWF Legion of Doom? Legion of Doom, remember the Legion of Doom, Kate? We've had a lot of stopping and starting because the weather's been absolutely awful. But what you can see in this video is I'm removing the panel. <laughs> First thing we want to do, we're going to go and put the positive to the positive connection on your battery. Um, what we want to do is we want to go through the firewall and there's a little grommet hole just done underneath there. So I'm going to take this off like so. And then there's a, a Torx 27 bolt there, sorry. And there's one here. Now, instead of taking all this off, all you need to do is kill the parrot, first and foremost. <laughs> and then secondly, if you just get a piece of wood and you put a gentle little... Sorry, you all right? <laughs> just put a gentle bit of pressure on here, not too much. Go through the top there down with a screwdriver, or if you just get a set of pliers, if you've not got uh, much options around your torques. So pliers will do, I just like using these because they, once they're gripped on, they're gripped on, you've not got to put any pressure on them, they're kind of basically locked. If you've not got um, a torques bit, um, if you don't do much work on vans, you've not got a torques bit, you can sometimes get a screwdriver in and give it a little bit of a turn, but most of your connections on a Volkswagen and a lot of vehicles will be Talk, so it's worthwhile buying a little set, they're only cheap. And once you've done that, this little piece will come out. Katie, my assistant, if you come round this way, round, round, stand round here and film better. So what you're looking for is, if you can see it back there, there's a grommet hole. So take that out, that's where we're gonna go through. So you're gonna take this kind of grommet out there's, a, there's another grommet just behind there. I don't know if you can see it well on a camera, but I'll maybe try and crop in. It sits in like a little sleeve, like a little uh, metal frame. And you just want to basically use something like this. Really be careful when you're pushing through, you don't hit any of these wires, but you want to uh, put a hole through this here. Hi, Mark. Hi, Mark. With your grommet, all you want to do is just kind of put a little hole in it. You could go and heat that open get a neater hole but that's fine and then you want your wire thread your grommet through like that, like that. just don't split it make sure it stays intact and then you want to put your wire through uh, the hole and then on this side if you just pop so if you just try to orientate yourself so this is your glove box as you come down there's a little plastic covering just pop that down so once you've done that pull that through and uh, that is then your wire into your van and the next stage is going to be to lift the carpet hook up and to run it through just pull your carpet down a little bit well, i'm not going to do it because i've just put mine back in but pull your carpet down a little bit and then come behind the carpet and then in this channel down there, that should be sort of quite neat, nothing to sna snag it on or anything. So first off, you can take all your seats out and all the rest of it, which is which is fine if you want to do that. There's, you know, there's only a few bolts and stuff, but uh, you can fish it through. So the strategy is lift, it, lift the carpet up, then take your wire and then put it around something like that and then fish it through. But if you see, well, first off, my van is absolutely filthy. Can you believe this has only done 2,000 miles? Look at the state of it. Uh, but if you look at, I'm pushing this through, which is what I put the uh, tape around, 
and I'm just, I don't know if you can see it, but coming out, I'm just there in front of the front of the seat. And what I'm gonna do is, the diesel heat and everything's under the seat. And I, what I've done is I've took the bolts out of my seat. But as you can see, I will come out here, you can feel the lump. What I'll do is I'll uh, reach my hand where the hole is in the carpet, just there. I reach through from the back where the carpet is and uh, just pulled it off the stick, und undid the tape, and that's it, it's pulled through so I can fish that through. Same with the wires for the diesel heater. It'll just channel around the back neatly there and then go around the back of the units. So the wire comes in through the grommet, comes down here, goes across. You just want some uh, fiber reinforced tape like here and here, just to keep that in place. And then it runs close to the seats. It'll, there's uh, some other wiring there. It'll just run over that wiring and then it'll turn right and into the underneath of the driver's seat. Hope that helps guys. Position wise, my unit's gonna go here. And the reason for that is I'm gonna give a little bit of flex on the wire so that I've got the option to actually push the unit further back under the seat or I can turn the unit round and have the unit facing out into the van from under the seat with the drop down door. And all three of those positions, the wires will come through the side of the seat. So I've got that flexibility on, on which one I wanna do, which is another benefit of it not being separate. I'm sure this goes without saying, but I'll say it anyway. Make sure your unit's off. Make sure the 12 volt is off, 230 volt is off, and there's no power on the unit at all. But the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna connect this M8 connector to the positive on the battery. Now, if you are not comfortable with electrics and you don't trust yourself to not touch the metalwork as you're removing this bolt, I would strongly suggest that you remove the negative as a safety precaution. Now, I've done it a few times, so I'm, I'm quite comfortable. And what I'm gonna do is I've got a 16 mil cable with a M8 connector at the end. And then I've got a, an M4 connector into an inline fuse with a 60 amp fuse inside it. And then that will connect to the other end of my cable that's running through into my cab. It's hard enough doing a bloody job without a... Uh... Because I've got a filming installation, Anna. So that's it. We've got our M8 connector onto the 16 mil. We've got our fuse holder with a 60 amp fuse. That's connected with a, an M4 connection because the, the uh, slightly smaller connector connections even. Uh, that needs heat shrinking, but that again is an M4 connection. That will connect into the fuse uh, and that is your live through the grommet through the firewall and into the actual van. So again, take your M8 connector, which is gonna to go to your positive on your DC in. Again, I like to double crimp on these just to make sure I've got a really good solid connection. You want to take one of the bolts, one of the vibration washers, that'll go through there. This isn't heat shrunk yet, but again, just to show you for speed, the unit is off so I know it's safe. You'll need a 13 mil socket and it should be tightened to 14. So if you've got a torque wrench, I suggest you use that. And then what you're trying to do, For your ground, you can either find a common lashing point, as long as it's a good solid piece of metal, I know I've got good continuity here with this wheel arch. Uh, there's a little hole here, so all I've done is push a uh, nut and bolt, scratch a bit of the paintwork off as well for a bit of a better connection. For my DC in, which will effectively create a loop because the vehicle battery is grounded to the, to the van, will go through here. And then also my DC out, my 12 volt out, will also be grounded here as well. So for a bit of a recap, we've got the positive that runs through to the front of the vehicle and then connects to the 
60 amp inline fuse and that will then connect to the positive on the battery, on the vehicle battery. And then we've got the negative, which will run out and go to a common ground. Next up, take your positive from your DC plus. Again, a washer and a spring-loaded washer. And then from your positive, so you've got a, an M8 connector shoe going through to an M4 connector shoe into your fuse. Another M4 shoe going through into your main fuse board. And then another M4 shoe going out to your negative into an M8 shoe, which will then connect to there. And then what I like to do is run another negative also to the ground. So you've got the DC out grounded as well. Now what I'm also going to do is because I've got my diesel heater which is fused I'm going to attach the positive and negative to my positive and negative uh, directly on the unit as well. Next up we need to connect up the engine live so that's to tell the unit that there's a power connection and that the alternator is running. You'll use the provided screw and a T20 Torx bit and connect it to C1. So underneath your steering wheel, you'll see a fuse box. Just clip that down. You're gonna take your pigtail fuse and I'll show you in a clearer diagram how to connect that. We need to run a piece of wire up through the back on the side underneath the seat, underneath the carpet, up around the side of the carpet but into the gap where the fuse bay is. So we're gonna to need to remove this step, lift that up and prise the carpet back. And the wire can fit right down there. And you want it to fit just on the inside of the carpet there. You can hold it in place with some fiber reinforced tape. And then you wanna carry on underneath there all the way through to the back where your other wires are. As you come to put your step back, you might find that one of these clips has come loose. If it has, try and use uh, something to just pry it out and then re-slide that in into the into the groove on your step and then re-push back in if you try and do it by not taking this out you'll really struggle um, anyone who's done bits on vans will know how to handle that but just for anyone who's a bit of a newbie a bit of a tip and again for any newbies if you're wondering what this is this is the intake for air for the diesel heater I've just had to remove that a little bit, just give me a little bit of room to lift the, lift the step up and lift the carpet up while I run the wire through. What I'd also add is, if you can, I would recommend wrapping your wire, any wiring that you put in your vehicle, wrapping the wire in some kind of uh, ducting or insulation tape. What this is doing is protecting from any vibration. When you drive your vehicle, loads of little uh, minute micro vibrations that could wear on the plastic of the wire and then could eventually reach the core of the wire. So if you can uh, put some kind of insulation or whether that's taping it down, clips or actual fabric wrap the tape, that will prevent that happening. For the actual connection to the pigtail fuse, you can just use either an inline crimp like that, or you could use something like a Wago connection like that. If you're wondering how to find your ignition live on another vehicle, if you don't know the uh, placement of it, just touch the body of the uh, vehicle, like the seat or just anywhere where there's good continuity, and then touch the back of the fuses one by one with this, turning your engine on and off, and you'll work out which is the live fuse. So if it's on when the engine's on, you know it's on. If it's off, then you know you've got the, the right one. If it's always on, don't go with that because it will pull from your battery and flatten your battery. So you only want it to be on when your engine is on, i.e. your ignition is on. So that's the way to test it. Go from the bottom row up to the next row and there's a little yellow fuse there, 25 amp fuse. You just want to go in any of these here. I've actually gone in this one. So if you go from this yellow one and go across one and then another, that's where I've gone. When you're connecting your solar, there's another thing that we want to do. Uh, we want to see which is positive and negative. And again, you really need to be careful with this because electricity coming through your solar is quite dangerous. Now, if it's a negative number, it means that the polarity is the wrong way around. So you'd need to swap them over. So I know my positive connection with my multimeter is the positive connection 
on the actual solar panel. So that's it, we've connected the negative of the solar to the DC negative in, and then we've connected the positive of the solar into the C2 on the back of the unit. There's a couple of things you can do. So I'd recommend putting in an inline connection there. Um, you could even go as far as put a kind of, um, like a cut-off switch, but I think that's a bit overkill, really. I think just an inline solar connector would do the trick. And then that means if you ever need to disconnect it, you can do from that connection. Obviously, when you are connecting your solar, ideally, you either want to do it in the dark, which would not be convenient, cover up your solar panel to reduce the electricity that's running, running through it. And even then, you need to be really careful. It's securely covered and that there's no electricity running through it at all. So there's one last thing that we've not done yet, and that's to connect the fuse uh, at the vehicle battery at the front for the alternator. And if you just use some tie wires, uh, you'll see I've just put one there and I'm just about to put another there and that'll securely tie that to the other wires. Just double check that positive and make sure it's nice and snug. Don't over tighten. So that's it, we've connected alternator, we've fused it. We've connected the ignition live so that the unit knows that the power's coming on. We've connected the 12 volt. So we've got a 12 volt fuse box with multiple blade fuses in there so that we can then connect other devices like fridge, lights, etc. We've connected the solar. We've earthed both the 12 volt out and the 12 volt in, and we're ready to turn the unit on. Now, before you turn the unit on, make sure that all your crimps are sound. Make sure all your crimps are sheathed with heat shrink. Make sure all your bolts are connected securely. Don't over tighten them. There is guidelines in the sheet that you get to make sure that you don't over tighten them. So it's got the uh, newton meters torque in there. Make sure you check all your wires, make sure there's no cuts or scathes or anything that's kind of showing any bare wire. Now is the time to do it before you get all your units in. Obviously I've got my units dry fitted in so they're not uh, fixed yet. So as you can see, it's showing that the solar charge is working. If we go into that, it's a really overcast day. We're not getting much out of that at all. If we turn the 12 volt on, you can hear it click. And what it'll be showing is the connection to the diesel heater. And what I'll do now is I'll go and start the vehicle up. It'll flash up, there's gonna be a DC charge coming from the alternator. And if we go into that, it's a DC charging. You'll see it's not drawing any charge at the moment and that's because it's full. So because it's full, if we plug in something like a hairdryer to reduce the battery down a bit, turn the 230 volt on, you'll hear the inverter boost up. You'll see the dotted line showing that the 230 volt output is there. Let's turn the hairdryer on one. We start to see that use change. We turn it up. You see that bar change there? We go up. We turn it right up to the very top setting. You see that bar go right up now. And actually, if we go into the 230 output, see we're pulling 1,828 watts. That's on full settings. Just so you can hear me, this is on a GHD hairdryer, which is showing 1800 to 2100 watts. What the unit also does as well is, depending on the output, it'll change how long it's gonna to take to charge. And obviously all this can be done on the remote, it doesn't need to be done on the actual unit itself. Honestly, I very rarely check the unit because it's always charged and it's just a bit more of a fit and forget system. Let's check solar again. Yeah, it's still only pulling 15 watts, but obviously that's pulling over a longer period of time. It's always on in the background, always working and charging your battery. And obviously it depends on, on what time of day. And this is why I say, whatever units you're gonna be putting into your camper vans, you really want something with good DC-DC charging because solar is great as an ambient background top up, but it's not great at replenishing the battery quickly once you've used it over a short period of time. And as you can see, it's still pulling 137 watts from the vehicle battery. And I'll go and turn that off now. So I'll turn that off now, and you can see it's dropped right down. It's not getting any power. Battery's still full. Solar's still topping up. And you can also see that we've also now got power to our diesel heater. So I can now start to actually prime this and get it working. 
So this is 230 in, 230 out. 230 out is blue and comes with a plug already on it. You just need to unwire the plug and then use some orange extra thick cable with your earth negative and positive, which just screws in like so. And then that just comes back together and then screws together. Make sure it's tight because it is waterproof. And then for your campsite connection, Again, you can get these off Amazon, positive, neutral, and earth, wire up together, screw that back together. V230 out, again, Nutrit connector, which is gray. Again, wire up the positive, earth, and neutral. It's worth noting that there is a safety mechanism which will stop the 230 out going into the 30 in and vice versa. And if you plugs, positive, earth, and neutral, and then if you want to chain off to another plug, you just connect your positive, earth, and neutral to the same connections and then chain off to your next plug socket. Oh, it's a satisfying click, that. Your remote connection is really easy too. That's got five pins and just clips in and then screws tight. It's got full instructions on how to wire it up. There's five wires, yellow, white, and gray. The other two can just be snipped back and not used. We have stock available and we go out next day or sometimes same day. The leisure side of what we do is a small family run business. So if you like our content, please return the favor by buying from us. And we promise that we'll give you the very best price. These videos take ages to do, they drive Kate mad. So if you can like and subscribe, but more importantly, comment below and give me any tips on how I could improve the videos. Or more importantly, say hello and wind me up. Thank God for that, we'll go to the pub now.